J.B.S. Haldane once said, um, uh, I'm paraphrasing, he said, the universe is not only stranger than we have imagined, it's perhaps stranger than we can imagine. There's a physicist, one of these uh, Nobel Prize winning physicists at the, in the 1800s going into the 1900s, the turn of that century. We were at the top of classical physics. Newton's laws were working, electricity was understood. We had the power of knowledge of the laws of nature. And they said, but there are a couple of things, there's still some unknowns, but that's just a matter of getting an extra decimal place in the measurement, but we're done. We're done here. Just a few clouds on the horizon. We're good to go. Don't, be, don't become a physicist. There's nothing left to discover. And what would happen in the next 20 years? Relativity would be discovered. Special relativity and general relativity. The expanding universe. Quantum physics. All of classical physics would be turned on its ear because of the discoveries in the very two or three decades to follow the uttering of that statement. Half of my library are old books because I like seeing how people thought about their world at their time so that I don't get big-headed about something we just discovered and I can be humble about where we might go next because you can see who got stuff right and most of the people who got stuff wrong. Giordano Bruno looked up at night and said, oh, I see all these stars, that's kind of cool. I wonder if those stars are like our sun, just like really far away. If that's the case, Maybe they have planets like our sun has. Well, that was a heretical idea. It would mean Earth was not the object of creation. It would mean God was looking elsewhere as well. This was just completely heretical to the Catholic Church at the time. He refused to recant, and the Inquisition handled that case and handed him over to the Roman authorities and had him burned at the stake. The world that we live in today would not be possible if somebody didn't have the courage to imagine something new. I love this notion of the adjacent possible. The adjacent possible is sort of, it talks about exploring the perimeters of possibility. So don't see the world as it is, see the world as what it could be. You know, have a, take that cognitive leap, come up with an original vision. The adjacent possible is described by Stephen Johnson as a shadow future that hovers over the present state of things. A map, essentially, of all the ways the present can reinvent itself. And I think that's a, a sort of almost a state of consciousness that we can adapt, you know. Let's live our adjacent possible. Let's live the adjacent possible. Let's go through the world and not be blinded by what we see, but instead conjure up possibilities. And it's these these, it's, it's these states of mind that you carry with you for the rest of your life, that allows you to make a discovery that no one else has made before. You might have like a simple beginning. A new thought that no one has had before. And then it can sort of, its complexity can grow. I mean, look at New York City. <laughs> That's an idea embodied. That's an idea given form. Think of ideas as, as fire. If you if you rain fire in, if you domesticate the chaos that is fire and organize it, it can become the engine in your, you know, in your aircraft and help you travel across the sky. So it's all about how do we hone in and focus and, and refine these ideas so that the best ones are the ones that end up, you know, powering humanity to soar above all of the limitations that currently um, hold us back and you know, the ideas build, but they all start with sort of a simple desire. What do you want to do? How do you want to transform the world? When you wake up in the morning and you think, what can I come up with? What is a, a unique vision that I can contribute to humanity that starts simple and that can grow? Don't stop searching until you find it because that, that should be your guiding principle. You know, find uh, an idea, find a vision that just moves you to your core. You know, Camus used to say life should be lived to the point of tears. So find that thing that brings you to tears. Find that beautific vision, that truth, that moment of aha, and chase it. And when you find it, run with it. My favorite questions are the ones, dare I use the word, yet to be divine because there's a discovery yet to take place that will bring that question into the center of the table.
I live for those questions. So that means I can't tell you what they are because they derive from something yet to be discovered. If we discover what dark matter is, there's gonna be some question about dark matter that'll rise up out of the ground and say, I never even thought to ask that question. In 1920, no one thought to ask, how fast is the universe expanding? Because no one thought the universe was expanding at all. You can't ask questions about the movement of a universe that you don't even know is in motion. You can't ask questions about other galaxies if you don't even know there are other galaxies. So, on my deathbed, I will relish in all of the questions that came up that I never thought to ask. You might look up next time you walk out of a building on the possibility that the sky is clear and the universe is talking to you.